Hello, Daz community. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you back to my tutorial series. Now, I have had some questions about how I pose characters and what I do for facial expressions and getting poses. And so I thought I'd respond to that this week a little bit and just give you my tips for posing and then how I get the facial expressions that I like. Now, I think next week or the week after, I'm actually going to talk about some facial control plugins that you can get, and they're kind of cool. I think that they can be very useful, but today I want to just show you some basics about how we can pose our character and give her some nice expressions. So almost always, I am going to start with some type of base pose. And so I've got Milica here, and let's say we want to have her standing. So she's kind of kneeling right now. I've added a dress to her, and the dress is D-Force. And so we're going to have to simulate the D-Force dress before we are finished with the render. But if I want to get her to stand up, um, I can select some various base poses. I usually almost always start with, I suggest that you just buy some base poses. The one that I really like is this simply standing base pose. You can use it on female characters, male characters, it doesn't matter. But you can use these base poses, get your character into a basic pose that you like, and then edit that pose to really how you want it. So it's really up to you, but I love these base poses. So I'm going to choose a base pose first, and then we can kind of tweak that base pose to get it looking a little bit better. Okay, so for example, let me zoom out here. We're going to select Milica, and let's just put her into a nice pose. Let's adjust her so that she's in the right position. She looks very close right now to where I want her anyway. You know, we, we want to get her so it looks like she's standing on the floor. I've noticed a lot of times, if I'm not careful, she'll be hovering just a little bit above the surface of what she's supposed to be standing on, and it ruins the render. So we don't want to do that. So we're, I'm going to get her kind of roughly in the correct pose. All right, now we can manipulate this pose. So once I have the base pose, these are angel essence poses. Once I have her in the pose, I edit the pose how I like. This one, I think that her hand is gonna be a problem. So we're gonna just move it slightly. You know, now I can go in with my parameters tab, select different parts of her body, and we can completely change and move her position. This is how I always do it. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of you do this the same way, but I have had some questions, so I thought I'd respond. All right, let's look at another angle of this. I've got several cameras. It looks like her other hand, see, is, I don't know what she's doing. Her other hand is completely in a wrong spot so I'm gonna move this let's move this out maybe forward I always just select different body parts and then move them manually after using that base pose it saves a lot of time and a lot of effort so we're gonna kinda position some cameras now so maybe she's um, talking with someone or doing something so we're gonna have various poses by the way you notice how fast my camera is moving I'm not having any of those issues in my previous video where I can't figure out why she's not moving very fast and I gotta tell you what have I changed well not enough flowers I guess but the, <laughs> the deal is you know it's not her hair it's not the character Something else in the scenes making things go slow. But anyway, I digress. That'll be edited out of this video, I'm sure. All right, so I've got some good camera angles. I'm going to go back to my first camera because it's a whole entire body shot. And now I'm going to run 
a simulation to get that dress and its pose correct. So it's always good to save this before we simulate. Sometimes Daz crashes during a simulation. We do not want that. I have her in the position. Now, this is kind of an old scene, so I'm going to click on Milica, and before I do any simulations or renders, I'm gonna select her hair, and we're gonna do that little trick where we go to the surface, click on the hair, and then type in trans to see if we get that transmitted color. Okay, this one looks fine. So I'm not gonna have a crash. Remember, this is a bug. I forget to do this sometimes. Luckily, I'm pretty good at saving, but then I go to do a render or a render preview and I kill the DAS Studio because of that stupid bug. Still a problem um, with various hair. So let's run a NVIDIA iRay just to make sure our lighting's good. I like to try and set up the scene before I get things completely posed. So that looks pretty good. I like the light behind her. All right, so let's get back out of iRay mode. And now we're gonna simulate. So I'm gonna select Milica. We're gonna simulate her. This is a pretty simple scene, so we don't have to worry about simulating a bunch of different stuff. I'm gonna start the bones from Memorize Pose on, and we're just going to hit simulate. So this is gonna just adjust her dress. So let's simulate her. So you notice she starts from her A pose, and she's just gonna go into the pose that we chose. That'll be a nice um, adjustment for her dress. This simulation is going relatively quickly, so that's nice. Very simple scene, though. If you have trouble simulating, and I got tips from all of you about this, but hide your background. Just hide the background, make it invisible, and then you can simulate to your heart's content without worrying about slowing your system down. D-Force is amazing, I love it. If you haven't seen my videos on D-Force, check out my tutorial. You know, my um, tutorials are really designed for new users, but I'm really glad that a lot of you experienced Daz Studio artists are checking out my videos too, so I really appreciate that. I really want this to be a community so that we can talk and do things together. Okay, so my simulation is finished and I am pretty happy with what pose I have. I might do some adjustments on my cameras. And then let's look at facial expressions. All right, so with facial expressions, I also start off many times with a base pose. And you know, if you select Milica's face here and you go to your parameters tab, go to pose control, and you're gonna have all of these options. I have some base poses that are already designed to give your figure different expressions. So if you look at this, it's like happy perky, happy rolling on the floor laughing, and you can take these and just dial them up and change them. I have noticed that sometimes these base poses can honestly get kind of creepy. So I use these to a certain extent. However, I have noticed that I kind of just use a few things. I have these base poses from a Gale character. And the Gale character is just a character that I bought. If I go to my content library and I look for my characters, you'll see I have this character named Gale. And I don't know, it's just a young girl. But when I downloaded her, she comes with different expressions. And I've just noticed I've used these expressions a lot. So if you look over here in my parameters tab, I have these Gale base poses. I also tend to use the default base poses quite a bit too. And so like shock, surprised, smile. I really use these a lot. Shock is a great one. She just has this look. I love big eyes. So she really just kind of opens her eyes, kind of raises her eyebrows with the shock default 
base. The surprise one is really good too because she kind of opens her mouth and raises her eyebrows. I really like these. Um, and then the Gale poses are really good too. So afraid. These are, these are not as intense as some of the other ones. That's why I like it. What I suggest is you choose a set of base poses that aren't going to the extreme. And I've always just kind of found that that works really well. So like with this one, Milika is just happy in this scene. So when we're happy, I like to kind of keep her mouth open a little bit. Uh, you know, not like surprised open, but just kind of open. I actually might add that shock just because it opens her eyes so much. And she has such a pretty face that I think those big eyes just really help. And then we can always manipulate the eyes. I've talked about this in a different video, but you know, if I just type in the search bar eyes, remember she is a Genesis 8, so I'm going to put eyes. If you're using Genesis 9, just put I. But um, Genesis 8, you have to make it plural and eyes. But see, eyes side to side, that kind of thing. So you can move her eyes, and I think that always helps. It makes the model come to life more when you adjust her eyes and you don't have her always looking at the camera. Um, you know, sometimes we want her looking at the camera. Sometimes we want her looking at another object, but it really helps for a general pose if you just kind of adjust those eyes. I also like this eyes squint and widen so we can make her eyes even bigger or we can kind of squint them down. Just kind of depends on what you want and what you're trying to get at. Genesis 8 has a less contrasting expression poses than Genesis 9. So we don't have such a contrast. I have to admit that Genesis 9's expressions can get way wacky, but if you play with them in a subtle way, they work really well and they look great. I love how um, Genesis 9's eyes move around. The eyes are huge and very important when posing. You know, one of the tricks and I've shown this in another video, but I'll show it to you now, is you can click on individual eyes and point those eyes at what you want. So if you wanna point them at a camera, something like that, you can do that. You do that by selecting the eye and then under the parameters tab, choosing the eye. And then you can see right here, it says point at. Right now it's at none, but I can select anything in my scene, like the camera, for example, and if you click that, her eye will always stare at that no matter what pose you put her in. So that really helps if you want her always looking at, say, another character or something in the scene, her eyes will not move. You can move her around, you can repose her, but she will always stay looking at whatever you choose. So just choose each eye individually select that in your parameters tab and just go to point at select that and you're golden i just think another important thing is once you think you have your character posed then you want to do a test eye ray to make sure that number one that all of her body parts are visible like we don't have poke through she's not accidentally you know sticking her finger through her clothing or into her body, something like that. So I just kind of look around, do eye ray preview, make sure that she's on the ground, you know, that kind of thing. That looks pretty good. It looks like she's kind of upset. You know, that texture view versus the view in eye ray can be a little bit different. You all probably are aware of that. You know, it looks like she's kind of smiling in the texture but then she's not when with an eye ray so i always do eye ray previews because then i can go back like let's for example choose this close-up and i can go back to her face 
and we can change those expressions because it really looks like she's frowning. Remember another thing you can do, which is kind of cool with posing is you can select like her head and then go up here to the toggle. And then of course you can move her head around and that actually gets you some really natural positions of her head. Just don't go way wacky. But see, I'm just rotating that. Like, this looks like she's laughing now. We could repose her. Um, if you mess up, remember, you just undo it, or you can go up here, click on the little body, and say restore selected items, and she will readjust and go back to the base pose. Just what you have selected, just her head in this example. Okay, so that looks a little bit more happy. Milika's a happy girl. She's not upset about stuff, so I think this works pretty well. Now, of course, you can choose any part of her body and do that toggle. So, you know, like if I wanted to move her hips or her abdomen, I can select that and then we can adjust pose like this. This also gives us some kind of cool, more natural things. If you don't like it, of course, just undo it. Obviously, posing and expressions are some of the most time-consuming things that you do in DAV Studio. It can get really frustrating trying to get each individual position of your character's body where you want it. Like, I could do a better job here with her right arm. I just want to mention that I think it's also important, and I use this all the time with uh, posing, is to purchase a nice hand pose. Um, I'm always adjusting these hands and I will say that there are times when I go in and I will click on each individual knuckle, each individual phalange and I will adjust it if they have to be grabbing something, if you need to move that hand into a particular position. I always start off again with these base poses. So I have elegant hand poses and they come in really handy we have the left hand and then if i scroll down we have the right hand so you can see uh, this particular product comes with poses for genesis 3 and genesis 8 so when i select any part of the character if i want her right hand to repose i can just double click it and she will pose that was a very minor pose but you kind of get the idea hopefully I can just change those poses so this comes in also really handy no pun intended handy but you really should get some hand poses so these base poses really come in handy I know a lot of people think oh gosh why should I spend money on poses well this might be the one thing that you spend some money on because it just reduces the time you're spending creating your content and that's the big bonus of these base poses so you know like I'll put Milika in a pose and then I customize it rather than trying to do each individual body part I can get it done really really quickly and then I'm off to the races with rendering all right, I really hope that helped you, maybe give you some more insight. Like I said, I'm just trying to show you what I do. I'm not trying to say this is right or wrong. I've been playing around with Daz for over 20 years, and a lot of this is self-taught, and I've just kind of learned as I go. I'm always trying to get things done in a quick, timely manner. So I'm rendering many pictures, one after the other, and I've got to repose a lot and I'm trying to make it as efficient as I can. So I really do hope this helped you. Um, look for some other posing videos coming up. I'm going to give some tutorials on some of those facial expression add-ons and things like that. So keep that in mind. Until next time, I hope you have a great time rendering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and give me a couple comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. All right, let's render some of these pictures up, make a thumbnail, and we'll call it a day. <laughs>